Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kiwi College. I'm Sarah Smith, the Editorial Director of Kiwi. Uh, today, our presentation is on green ways to welcome your baby. I'm so glad you could all join us. Our fantastic speaker today is Mary Askategi. She's a certified baby planner who specializes in maternal health, fitness, and going green. She's also the founder of the International Academy of Baby Planner Professionals, and she's the author of the upcoming book, The Baby Planner Presents a Guide to Green Proofing Your Home. She's very Kiwi, and we're very happy to have her here talking about this topic. You can also find her online, by the way, at thebabyplanner.com. Mary is going to take questions today uh, at the midpoint of her talk and also at the end. So there's a way for you to send questions through uh, the webinar system. So please feel free to send questions at any time. We'll be on the lookout for them. Uh, and uh, she looks forward to doing that, I know. So Mary, we're thrilled to have you here at Kiwi College. And please, um, take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. I'm really excited to be here uh, sharing with you some green and simple ways to welcome your baby. And I'm just going to first start off just with, um, you know, briefly just sharing my story. I've uh, really, my passion prior to getting involved as a baby planner and fully into the whole going green mode was health and fitness. That's really the path that I had been on for quite a long time. Uh, just really had a love for understanding the body, the processes of the body, nutrition, and understanding how it all plays a very, very key role in the quality of life that you're living. And it was actually during my pregnancy where the sense of my um, smell was so heightened. You know, uh, in pregnancy, of course, all of our senses are heightened, but especially my smell. And I, I realized when, you know, I, one day I was in a car, it was less than even 30 seconds I'd been in the car, and I started to feel so, so nauseous, and we found a, a hidden air freshener. And um, when I was around, you know, any type of um, stores where there was a lot of fragrances and things like that, I started noticing. So I started doing a lot of investigating about how chemicals were affecting me. I started finding out some pretty amazing uh, educational things, but some overwhelming things. It put a scare in me at first, but I realized it was a, an opportunity to um, change my lifestyle and also contribute and share with my clients and friends and family all of the amazing resources and things that are available for all of us. So today I'm going to um, share a lot of information with you, and the information that I want to share is to educate and empower you, to support you. If I don't get around to all your questions today, please do feel free to email me. I am definitely available to answer questions and love to do so, um, so please do so. So I'm going to start with our agenda. I'm going to review uh, how Going Green ties right into the pregnancy connection. I'm going to share some facts worth knowing, uh, benefits, steps to Going Green. I'm going to summarize everything and then provide you uh, with resources. So with Going Green, there's a tremendous pregnancy connection because Pregnancy affects your body and your baby. What you put in your body and your skin affects your baby. And your environment affects your, ba your body and your baby. Um, literally the first 14 weeks of a pregnancy, your body undergoes a dramatic change as it begins to support the growth of your baby. It's really the most important time for the fetus. This is a period when all the major systems begin to develop and form. And of course, they mature as the trimester unfolds and into the birth and so on. But really, the, the first trimester plays a tremendous uh, key role in that development, so that's very important. Um, and tying into that, of course, like I would mentioned, everything around you, go, going um, in you, around you, on your skin, is important. The four main uh, points uh, in going green that we're looking at also is reducing, reusing, recycling, restoring. So in reducing, it just simply means decluttering, simplifying, getting rid of any excess stuff, right? Really understanding, OK, what do I really need? What's sufficient in my life? Um, reusing, so going to the grocery store, bringing your own bag in order to carry those groceries. Or um, if you're going to be using, a, using glass instead of plastic for water, or carrying a travel mug if you're going to be having um, tea or coffee. Recycling. A uh, majority of our landfills are expected to be a capacity in less than 35 years, so recycling absolutely helps. And what you're doing is you're setting your, yourself up as an environment that is going to be sustainable not only for you in, in your lifetime, but also your baby's lifetime. And then recovering um, and restoring any damaged goods rather than going ahead and buying um, so quick to buying the latest and greatest things, which is always fun to do, but sometimes they're not always necessary. And then what ends up happening is we end up getting rid of a lot of things that can, again, um, uh, pile, pile up the land system and also fill up a lot of toxins in our environment. So a few basic changes can definitely protect you, your baby, and the world around you. And we're going to review those. And before I start that, I wanted to share some facts that are really worth knowing and really important to understand. 
Every year, 1,800 new chemicals are introduced to North America with little or no toxicity testing. Okay? And I think what ends up happening, which is overwhelming, is that you see a lot of articles which mention avoid DEA, avoid parabens, avoid phthalates, and literally you know, every few weeks I see more you know, different toxins coming out. Sometimes it can be very overwhelming to understand it all. So what we are going to do today is I'm going to share with you some tips well, you don't necessarily have to know every single toxin that's out there and every different you know, definition of, of what it does and causes, but tips on how to recognize what's toxic versus what's not. Uh, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, man-made chemicals collect in our bodies, leading pregnant women to worry about what may be reaching your unborn children. Fortunately, you can take simple steps to reduce these risks by being smart about what you eat, drink, and breathe. According to the American Cancer Society, prior to the 20th century, only one out of 8,000 people were stricken with cancer in the US. Since the Industrial Revolution and introduction to a host of chemicals, one out of three people are stricken with cancer. That's tremendous. The EPA does not currently have standards for pharmaceuticals, and water utilities um, are not required to test for these chemicals. So pharmaceutical residues have been found in treated tap water supplies in 24 major US cities, which is why it is very important to have a water filtration system, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on. So some just basic benefits of going green. It's definitely not expensive. We'll talk about that. Um, going green can save you a lot of money. Your body adapts and is more equipped to respond to emotional environmental stressors. A green mama equals a healthy mama, healthy baby, and a healthy planet. Having the education will give you the empowerment and also give you the quality of healthy living. And then baby steps do add up, and we'll talk about that. I'll give you an example for that. And less consumption overall equals less waste. So steps to going green. We're going to discuss knowing what's in your products, knowing how to read labels, choosing non-toxic products, choosing organic fresh food and clothing, preparing your mind, body, and spirit, preparing your home environment, breastfeeding, having a green baby shower, creating a green registry, and consuming less. So the first one I wanted to start off with is knowing what's in your products, what goes in you, uh, on you, and around you. Um, a fact is that the government trade secret laws protect cleaning product manufacturers from having to reveal their ingredients. And at first, may, like I had mentioned before, may seem extremely overwhelming to learn and familiarize yourself with every toxic chemical and product that can harm you and your baby, but you can definitely begin with a few simple steps. Um, you want to know how to read labels. You want to get into the habit of reading labels. You want to ask questions. And then you want to use the available resources, such as the Environmental Working Group's Cosmetic Safety Database. And they also have some wonderful uh, shopper's guides to pesticides and cosmetics, which I'm going to share with you at the end. And they're, literally, you can carry them with you everywhere. They're wonderful. Um, one thing that I also wanted to tell you, let me see if it's on the next slide here before I get there, is that most products, if they say that they, um, if they don't disclose their ingredients, you also want to pay attention to that. Most non-toxic products will be happy to disclose the ingredients on the products that you're looking at. Um, and for me, household clean products play a very, very key role whenever I work with clients and they say, well, what's the first step I can take um, to, to create a non-toxic environment? I do take a strong look at the household clean products because you know those are airborne toxins that go into the air and so forth and spread all over. So an important um, piece of information to know or be aware of is that if you don't find disclosed ingredients, that should um, raise a flag right there. How to read labels. OK, so above here, I have an example of a liquid soap that disguises itself as natural and organic. Um, and I wanted to find out if anybody can name some of the toxic ingredients. Or if anybody could just if name you, one. Yeah, if anyone wants to raise their hand or send it into the questions, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll read it out to Mary and tell you if you're right. All right, we have, a, we have some hands raised. Um, if you if you folks who raised your hands could just send in in the question format, that would actually be great, and we'll see what see if we're right. Well, Mary, I think you might have to just fill us in. Okay, no Maybe problem. It takes too no long problem. To type. Okay. Oh wait, no, no, we have a we have a guess. Methyl okay. paraben and propyl paraben. Is that right? Yes. Wonderful. Absolutely. All right. Wonderful. Very good. Thank you. Very good. Okay. Allison and someone else said. SLS and propyl paraben fragrance. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Great job, Toby, too. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yes. And then you'll also notice there the um, you'll notice the second ingredient, sodium lauryl sulfate, and you're also going to notice the uh, Kamakai DEA as well. So, but then when you look at all the other ingredients, right, you see the vitamin E and alanine and the extracts of chamomile and so forth. And and then of course they say they're natural and organic, but 
you know, how are you supposed to know, right? And also something I wanted to mention that, you know, just by, I was fooled also in the beginning when I used to go into like the natural health food stores or the local whole foods and things. I automatically think, well, every product in there must be non-toxic, right? <laughs> you know? But that is not really the case. And so it does take a little bit of, of work in the beginning just to familiarize yourself with that. Um, and like I mentioned, most products that you want to use will disclose all their ingredients. And I gave you an example, for example, the seventh generation does have a label reading guide that can be found on their website, which is phenomenal. Uh, but many other companies as well are very, very supportive of this. And you're going to find that there's a host of many new companies also forming that are um, on track. So there are three main signal words to look out for when you're reading for labels. Um, the EPA has four categories which fall under these three signal words. The first is caution, the second is warning, and the third is danger. So the, the caution level is um, sometimes a non-irritant, but a very slight irritant uh, that can be found in the product. Okay, so that's when they say caution, that's what that means. A warning signal will mean that it is actually a moderate uh, risk of having um, irritations and a little bit uh, moderate toxic. And then danger, of course, is highly toxic. So you want to just look out for those three word signals. Um, if they don't have any of them, then you know, most likely you're good to go. Um, but caution, warning, and danger. And I would definitely stay away from anything that says uh, warning or danger on the label. And that's also what is very, very helpful. Like again, like I said, when you don't recognize or know every single product or may not have the time, just really seeing those signal words there and even asking questions will be very helpful. Um, so here I provided an example of a non-toxic label. Um, you can see here that we have coconut oil, corn oil soap, and so forth, and it just gives you a list of the different aloe vera and extracts and so forth, but you don't see um, any of the, uh, the uh, DEA, sodium lower sulfate, and so forth, the parabens, right, fragrance. And you do start getting used to it. Once you do it, um, it's very easy to start picking up on it, so there is hope there. Uh, but this is just a really great example there. Okay, so uh, according to the EWG's, uh, again, they're in the Environmental Working Group, Skin Deep, the highest concern product categories, okay, are hair color and bleach, hair relaxer, nail polish, skin lightener, and nail treatment. And I'm very, very happy to say that there are uh, companies that are coming out there with phenomenal nail product lines that are non-toxic. Also hair color, I know that there's, uh, in New York City, there was a hair salon in the village um, that's all non-toxic products. That's really, really wonderful. Um, Pretty Nails is another company, uh, Kim Diamato, who actually uh, uh, is a model, used to be a model. Um, during her pregnancy, found herself uh, nauseated with all the toxins. That's what inspired her to start her whole nail polish line. So uh, definitely you have resources that are out there and very helpful. And you want to remember that natural and organic does not always mean safe. And what I mean by that is that, like in the first slide that I showed you with the, um, the, the label, the liquid soap label, where we saw that there were actually toxic chemicals in that label, they did not have this, the USDA organic seal on there as well. And so you want to look out for that. Looking out for seals also are very, very helpful. So having the USDA organic seal will verify that it is indeed a safe product. But if it's just saying that it's natural organic and there's no seal on it, you just, again, want to have that um, you know, flag should be raised there just to be aware. Okay. Fragrance is extremely important. You saw that in the first slide also that there was the word fragrance there. It is a growing health and environmental hazard. Um, we're learning a lot more about it, and a lot of awareness is being raised right now on this. Um, secondhand fragrance chemical exposure is just like secondhand smoke. Okay, that's, that's quite a, a statement. You're exposed to toxins, toxins literally without your consent because it's everywhere. 95% of the chemicals and fragrances are synthetic compounds derived from petroleum. Your skin, which is your body's largest organ, absorbs fragrance chemicals by direct application, by contact with fragrance items, and by exposure to air containing fragrance oil droplets. One in five people experience health problems when exposed to fragrances. And asthma is also um, a, a really uh, has become, over the last few years, quite a, a big problem for children as well. So they're, they're really, um, again, the awareness for fragrance is just growing phenomenally, and we're learning a lot more about that. I'm also going to be sharing with you um, some tips that are going to help you. You know, how do I avoid if I'm on the bus or if I'm in a store or if uh, I'm in a classroom and there's a lot of fragrances, am I going to be harmed? And I am going to talk about that a little bit more because there are wonderful things that you can do um, to uh, reduce or minimize your exposure. So I provided here uh, a way to, uh, you know, 
uh, another step is to choose non-toxic products, of course. And like I mentioned, this is one of the first key things I look for when I'm working with a client to go green. There are many eco-friendly alternatives. And here what I did is I provided you five basic ingredients that serve as building blocks for many safe home cleaning needs. Okay, so we have baking soda, borax, soap, washing soda, white vinegar, or lemon juice. And there are a lot of wonderful recipes and a lot of resources. They're available online. There's various books like Better Basics Home. Um, I also think Supernatural Home, they provide really, really great recipes if you're interested in actually making some of these green products. But there are also so many wonderful companies right now that are out in the market. You have Seventh Generation, you have EcoCover that are literally making it very convenient and easy for those of us that don't have the time to actually um, make the cleaning products. Um, and so baking soda, for example, here cleans and deodorizes, softens water to um, increase sudsing and uh, cleaning power of soap. It's a good scouring powder. Borax cleans and deodorizes. It's an excellent disinfectant, softens water. It's available in the laundry section of the grocery store. Soap uh, biodegrades safely and completely and is non-toxic. It's available in grocery stores and health food stores. Sold as liquid flakes uh, powder or in bars. Bars can be grated to dissolve more easily in hot water. You want to insist on soap without synthetic scents, colors, or other additives. Um, washing soda cuts grease and removes stain, disinfects, softens water. It's available in the laundry section of grocery stores or in pure form uh, from chemical supply houses of sodium carbonate. And then white vinegar or lemon juice, they're wonderful for cutting grease and freshening. They're really, really great. Okay. And choosing organic and fresh food, this is a, a tremendous. And I'm going to talk a little bit more when I get into actually preparing your body, mind, and spirit. I'm going to dive into that a little bit more. But this is going to be very, very helpful, uh, especially because you're literally strengthening your immune system and preparing your body to deal with all the outside environment around you that you cannot avoid. So the growing consensus among scientists is that, the small, uh, that small doses of pesticides and other chemicals can cause lasting damage to human health, especially during fetal development and in early childhood. And we know that because you know, children, are, uh, their organs are you know, very immature, young, and developing. And the amount that they can actually soak in and take in um, is, is, is not the same as an adult. By choosing organic and fresh food, your body will absorb more nutrients. You will support a cleaner and safer environment. You will support the development, health, and safety of your baby. And although it may seem a bit more expensive, in actuality, when you look at your, your lifespan, the average lifespan of a human being, you, you will avoid to rely on medical visits and prescriptions, which are far more costly. In actuality, it is not that expensive. And there's a lot of great resources um, that will be available for you. Um, for example, many of your local communities, your farmers markets, um, you know, you'll have uh, really, really great deals on uh, the food there, uh, especially when they're in season. You'll have the availability to shop. Um, you also have the community-supported agriculture. With, uh, when you join that, you become part of the community, and you can also find really great um, sources of saving money. Um, and a really great website for all of you is to check out localharvest.org. And again, if um, I'm talking too fast or if you don't have time, if you don't have a pen and paper in front of you, I will be more than happy to provide you uh, with the resources after the call. Um, something else that I wanted to mention uh, before going into my last point is, for example, Kellogg's recently had a recall of nearly 30 million boxes of corn pops, fruit loops, honey snacks, and apple jacks um, due to a spate of odor which induced sickness. Okay? Um, and they just linked this to the presence of a petrochemical. And what's interesting is they, they originally tried to temper fears by announcing that um, the off-taste smell was actually caused by slightly elevated levels of uh, substance commonly present in uh, low levels of the waxy resin that are used to make in the packaging, uh, packaging materials. So you know, when you find this out, it's at first alarming because you think, oh my gosh, who can I trust? So when it comes to food, I always tell um, you know, my expecting and new clients even you know, veteran clients and friends and family who are always interested in nutrition and how they can choose better nutrition for their bodies and their children, is that the, the less processed, the better. The more fresh, um, the closer to, to nature that you can find the food, you know, the better it is. And of course, we want to choose um, organic and um, non-pesticide. And also growing your own food. I mentioned this, uh, someone had mentioned this in the last call, and this is a really, really great point. Growing your own food is actually not that hard. Um, there, even though you may be in varying different climates depending on your location, 
you can grow um, you know, various different types of food. Um, there are many great resources available, and especially now there's a movement that is supporting um, urban uh, cultures and growing food in urban societies in ways that you can actually have like even your lawn or, or a garden or even using your roof. So there's just a lot of really great resources. It's a lot of fun. You get to learn. You get, be, you, know, you get to be closer to your food and get to learn more about the food. And then you can also start to share that with your children so they have a really, um, a really great understanding of where their food source is coming from and how they can work with that. It tends to be a lot of fun. Um, if you're shopping at the local farmer's market, that's also fun. You can blend foods and create foods and different recipes, and there's just a lot of wonderful chefs out there and a lot of great resources for that as well. Clothing and pesticides. So I wanted to talk about this a little bit more because uh, when I found out this information as well, this also uh, raised my awareness and understanding the importance of, of cotton. Cotton is considered the world's dirtiest crop due to its heavy use of insecticides, which is the most hazardous pesticide to human and animal health. Cotton covers 2.5% of the world's cultivated land, yet uses 16% of the world's insecticides more than any other single major crop. So that's huge. And that, when I found that out, I immediately just wanted to start making changes. Surveys show that rural cotton farmers often store pesticides in their bedrooms or in close proximity to their food, and some even use, uh, even reuse pesticide containers for drinking water. And these farmers and their families are at high risk for acute pesticide poisoning as well as chronic effects. During the conversion of cotton into conventional clothing, many hazardous materials are used and added to the product, including silicone waxes, harsh petroleum, scours, softeners, heavy metals, flame and soil retardants, ammonia, and formaldehyde, to just name a few. And of course, the first thing that comes up is, OK, well, organic cotton is more expensive. But again, if you look at what organic cotton is preventing, right, it's preventing skin irritations, um, which can lead to, again, colicky babies and lead to buying um, you know, either uh, lotions to, um, to resolve the situation and so forth, you actually cut down on your cost or it actually evens out because you, you don't have to supplement with those additional costs in order to deal with the rashes or the colicky baby and things like that. So that's also very important to understand. And again, over time, um, you are saving your health because you're preventing anything that can be seeping into the skin into your own skin and into your baby's skin. And at the same time, it's really helping out the organic industry and helping those farmers that are doing a great job um, and not supporting the, um, the farmers that are uh, induced with these pesticides and going through these health issues. Mary, I think this is a great point to take a, um, a, a break and ask and answer some of the questions that are, we have sure. from, our, um, from our listeners today. So we have some about um, some of the non-toxic products and some about food. So let's start sure. with the person who asked um, about SLS. Um, this listener says she's confused because some natural companies do add it into their products, saying that it's from uh, coconut. And so we, we want to know what, what your stance is on that ingredient. Yes, and that is actually a really, really great question because how do you really know and what's the level of toxicity and so forth? And it is, it is, it can be naturally derived. And there are um, sodium lauryl sulfate is one of those that there is a little bit of, um, I don't want to say controversy, but people are going back and forth on the issue because it's a very common ingredient. Um, like I said, a lot of it we saw the coconut is derived. Um, and you really don't know the extent. But it is said that um, SLS may be the most dangerous ingredient in personal care products. It's an active ingredient used in garage floor cleaners, in engine degreasers, in industrial strength soaps. Um, and it is a very corrosive chemical that is used to clean, like I said, industrial and greasy surfaces. So when you see that it's derived from a, a you know, a coconut source and things like that, it's just a, you know, uh, could be like a natural extension. I personally, when I see it, just because I tend to be more on the uh, <laughs> preventative side of everything, and also because, for example, the fact that this specific label had, you know, that sent a flag, even though it was like, co you know, coconut derived, that it immediately sent a flag. And then when I started reading the rest of the label, I saw the DEA, I saw the parabens in the frig, I said, oh, okay. So that's just a key word that, again, if all the other ingredients on the label are absolutely fine. You're, you don't see any parabens. You don't see uh, fragrance. You don't see anything else. And perhaps that's the only one there that raised the red flag, but everything else is um, organic and natural. And if it does have the seal, then I would be fine with it. Does that help to answer the question? Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Um, we also have a question about the term 
uh, fragrance in reference to natural. Can that refer to natural scent agents, or is that a generic term, an indication of a man-made chemical that we should be wearing? Yes. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, and that's a great question. The, the, the term fragrance does, um, is most likely and most times considered man-made. When it is not a, um, a, a fragrance, it will say that it came from essential oil. It will give you specific information to its origin. But most times in not, you, uh, fragrance itself as a term when you see it on any label will be considered a man-made chemical. Um, there is an actual amazing organization. Um, let's see if I can actually um, find you. I think I have it right over here. They have a wonderful uh, brochure and wonderful information. I got mine from the Environmental Health Network, uh, but it's a great brochure that provides so much information. Um, I think you can get it through healthbrochures.info, and the name of the brochure is called Fragrance, a Growing Health and Environmental Hazard. And then it gives you a lot of statistics and a lot of more details where you can kind of understand um, the effects, the, the skin effects, clothing, bedding, respiratory effects, and so forth. Um, but when I see fragrance, the actual name fragrance, on any label. To me, that because it can, um, uh, you know, I don't know where that's coming from or where it's derived, what the source is. I already take that in as, as um, a man-made synthetic chemical and not natural because, like I said, usually the natural, um, uh, anything that's natural will tell you exactly where it came from, like what es you know, flower essence or oil and so forth. And on that note, um, because again, pregnancy, you know, you're, um, is such a sensitive time. It has a lot of changes and things going on in the body, change in hormones, change in everything. You definitely do want to check with your OBGYN, your midwife, whoever your care provider is, um, what is going to be more useful and, and helpful. You want to double check any types of herbs, any types of things, even though again they may seem safe and natural. Um, a lot of them are not FDA regulated as well, and you do want to double check and you want to make sure that it is okay uh, for you. So I just wanted to mention that. Can, that's great. Can you repeat the name of that um, site where you said those brochures, that fragrance brochure is? Yes, it is um, www.healthbrochures.info. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Um, and, you know, we have a, a number of questions about food, too, but before we move on to those, I, um, I just want to also point out and what, what you're what you're saying about the, these terms not being regulated, that uh, Kiwi's recently been d done some research on um, regulating in the personal care industry and these terms, you know, natural is not a regulated term. And even when uh, a lot of people slap the word organic on something, um, but, and, and of course, as you said, the seal is what's important, but the, since the USDA doesn't actually uh, regulate personal care products yet, although the Organic Trade Association hopes that they will, um, if you see that on a personal care product, it means that there are ingredients in there that are, that are certified organic, but they're food-based ingredients. So I thought that was a really interesting thing that I just learned recently at Kiwi, um, that uh, an entire personal care product can't be certified organic, but it can have certified ingredients. So, you know, we're working towards that. I hope someday, you know, we'll really be able to, to certify those things fully. So I think it's really helpful to have that uh, knowledge about reading the ingredients that you gave us. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and to skincosmetics.org or the Skin Deep database provided by EWG is a phenomenal, phenomenal resource. So if you're not familiar with that, I highly recommend going on their website, getting familiar, uh, understanding how to research the database. These guys have done a tremendous amount of work and continue to do so to really understand, uh, under uh, stand what's happening and to provide you the real information. Um, at the end, when I show you the um, the guides, the shopper's guide, you'll see just some brief information there. But they've done an outstanding job literally sharing with you, okay, what's legit, what's not, and really making it easy for, for all of us. That's great. I agree. It's a wonderful resource. So let, let's have, move on to a couple of um, food questions before we um, hear the rest of your presentation. Um, we have someone who plans on making her own baby food and wants to know how she can guarantee the food has the same amount of nutrients offered in store-bought baby food. Oh, okay. In terms of, um, okay. So, for example, you definitely want to buy organic. Organic will definitely ensure that there's not pesticides. And a question that always comes up, well, if I wash, if I peel uh, my foods, uh, even if they're not organic, will that get rid of the residue or the pesticides? There will still be trace amounts of the pesticides on those foods. So you definitely want to um, shop uh, locally and shop organic and make sure that you have that to start off with. 
Um, what's really important to understand as well, the fresher the food, the more likely it is to have the, um, the, the proper nutrients, the closer to its ripening stage. So for example, a lot of times when I go shopping for a banana, if that banana is way, way too green, believe it or not, because it hasn't fully reach, uh, reached the complete ripening stage, it does lose some of the nutritional content once it's cut off from the tree. Not too, you know, not too, too much, but, but some. So that's just very interesting to find out. That's why I really enjoy buying local, because most of the time, since they're not traveling far, they do let the fruit ripen a little bit more, which then does have more nutritional content and value. And then when you actually blend the foods, um, you know, your digestive system does not have teeth. Right, to, to literally chomp down and, and break down all the nutrient contents to be absorbed into the body. So blending foods actually is a really, really great way to extract all the nutrients and make it readily available, um, not only for your baby, but even for you. Sometimes I know, um, you know I've been on uh, different types of detoxes and, and you know, fun retreats where I've blended some foods and, and done some fun things, not just juicing, but actually blending. And it's a really, really great way um, you know, to, uh, to prepare food. Uh, and lots of you can do dips, and you can do sauces, and um, there's just lots of great things that you can do. Did that help? Great. Um, we, we also have a question about um, processed food. Um, this, this listener said that when buying processed food, like cereals, waffles, et cetera, I've noticed that if I get the generic form, um, which that's made in Canada, I get better ingredients in the product, avoiding HFCS and trans fat. And yes. we want to know, have you noticed this? And do you know anything about the standards on this? Yes. You know, it's, it's very interesting. Um, this is not only with food. It's also with toys. It's even also with our personal care products. Uh, different countries do have different regulations in terms of what they will accept and what they will ban in society. Unfortunately, the United States has been um, the loosest when it comes to food, uh, you know, some toy care products, especially personal care products. I mean, you'll, you'll find that, for example, Johnson & Johnson, I think it's in Japan, they will totally revise or, or reformulate their product for that, you know, country versus us. It's just, it's just crazy. And again, it's all due to the regulation of the laws. Um, I'm sure that there's definitely, um, you know, the example that you gave with the Canadian waffles generic and so forth, uh, is definitely very true, uh, and you'll find that. But the most important thing to also realize is when you're picking or you, when you're choosing your food, when you're picking the choices to eat, you want to understand, okay, what is the nutritional value? What is the nutritional content that I'm getting with this? The number one thing I tell my clients is um, focusing on what to avoid. Oh, I have to avoid, you know, cookies. I have to avoid cake. I have to avoid alcohol. All these things can be, you know, very overwhelming and sometimes throw you into the other end. What's really important to understand is um, rather than trying to avoid, look at what everything is giving you. Your, your, your body is literally a machine. It's like it's storing fuel and energy. It's, it's a really great, um, you know, your quality of life and living functions much better when you have better fuel into your system. So rather than looking at what to avoid or what's processed, ask yourself with every food choice you're making, what is this, you know, food, this meal, uh, this thing that I've chosen to eat, what is this actually giving me? And if, let's say, it's, it's not giving you any vitamins or nutrients, then ask yourself, did you give yourself, before you even eat that, did you give yourself any vitamins or nutrients today? Um, did you get in any fruits, any vegetables, um, you know, things like that. So that's very, very important to, to look at. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as well when I get into the, um, the next section. Great. And uh, before we move on to the ne your next section, I just want to also, um, the, one of our listeners, um, sent in a tip about making baby food um, to share with, with the other people who are wondering about that. She recommends the uh, um, Super Baby Food, which I believe is a book and, and a website too. Uh, so I don't know if you know that one, Mary, but I, I wanted to pass that along from one listener to another. And also I want to tell everyone, if you haven't seen your June-July issue of Kiwi yet, that you should definitely take a look because we have an article on making baby food uh, with some, um, some nice recipes and um, an interview with uh, the author of Organically Raised, which is a great new book about making baby food, so I recommend those resources, too. Oh, great. And also, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll. Okay. And also, one other thing I want to clear up is the name of the website to look up um, all of those personal care products. It's cosmeticsdatabase.com. So I just want everyone to have the specific URL. It's the Skin Environmental Working Group Skin Deep Cosmetic Safety Database, but the, the actual URL is cosmeticsdatabase.com. Okay, so we had a question about that, about how to actually find it. So, Great. Um, 
So great. So could you, why don't we, why don't we move on and we'll, I know we have a number of other questions here, but we'll uh, hear more from Mary and then we'll get to these other questions and others that you send in while, while we're listening. No, that's perfect. Cool. And, and I just wanted to quickly add, too, as far as the uh, blended foods, is also there's many uh, wonderful uh, um, resources for that as well, like Sprout Babies, another one, Tyler Florence, I know is behind that, but there's many coming out now as well that it can be very convenient and um, available to you if you don't want to prepare it yourself. So thank you for that, Sarah. I appreciate it. Great. Oh, and I'll just, just one more plug from another listener who has a blog called Going Green with Noah, and she does organic um, baby food instructions. Okay, so oh, great. So thanks for sending that in, Mel. Okay, so go ahead. So go ahead, Mary. <laughs> okay, so the next tip that I give is preparing your body, mind, and spirit. And this is something that, again, is, is really close, dear, and near to my heart because I've been doing this for a long time. Preparing your body to handle unavoidable toxic loads. Your body is very powerful with a very strong immune system. Your body has a better chance of handling unavoidable substances in and around your environment. And this is true, you know, if um, uh, because a lot of times they say, oh my gosh, what happens if my, my neighbor is using pesticides in their lawns? Or if I'm riding a bus and there's tons of fragrance on there? Or, if, you know, how do, I mean, everything around me, not everybody around me is, is um, aware or conscious or, you know, uh, going green. They're not on that path. So what do I do? How do I avoid that? I'm doing, you know, all the steps. You know, your body is a great tool. And again, if you're uh, feeding your body uh, the proper foods, if you're reducing stress, if you're staying hydrated, if you're getting the adequate rest and sunshine, these things are all wonderful steps and preparations that you can take to build a very, very strong immune system and handle, um, you know, unavoidable uh, toxic loads that are around you. So reducing stress either through breath awareness um, and moderate exercise, whether it's walking, biking, yoga, Pilates, swimming, or meditation. Again, you want to check with your care provider before you're starting any exercise program, um, you know, uh, what they feel about that at that point, because you want to ensure uh, the stage and level that your body's at before you begin any program, and you want to pass that through your care provider. You definitely want to stay hydrated with filtered pure water. I gave you a statistic there about the amount of toxins going into uh, the water system and um, what's not being regulated right now. You definitely want to avoid plastic water bottles, especially three, six, and seven. Luckily, there's a lot of great resources and websites and local stores, even, even uh, you know, supermarkets, like the even big name brand supermarkets are now carrying um, PVC-free, phthalate-free, BPA-free bottles and things like that. So it's, it's a really, really great thing. Uh, but having like a clean canteen for yourself or having a water filtration system like reverse osmosis um, really can help so, so much. And also will save you cost there because instead of having to always buy the bottled water, you are um, always replenishing you know, with your water bottle, uh, clean canteen, and so forth. And so this can not only be great for your health, but also great for the environment. Um, we had mentioned, again, part of this preparing your mind and body and spirit is eating healthy and the importance of nutrition and the powerful role it can play for your body. And getting adequate rest, uh, you know, this is so important. Um, we are, whether we like it or not, we're definitely in sync with nature. Uh, nature has a clock uh, that we are all part of, whether we like to hear it or not. And our circadian rhythm begins at 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. And what that means is your body is going through different stages of repair, okay? And so a lot of times if you're not, uh, let's say you decide to go to sleep at 12, midnight, or 1, what you're doing is you're just interfering into the specific stage or that cycle. Um, we're not perfect, of course, and there are probably going to you know, be moments in your lifetime where you're not going to bed at 10 and so forth, and that's fine. But it's just to make you aware that there is a rhythm, there is an importance to getting adequate rest, there is a repair system that does happen internally in the body. And then you do want to listen to your body. Um, many times I tell my clients, you have, you're very intelligent. You, you know, a lot of times we're, we're used to always asking others for advice. But all of us do have a very, um, the, the body knows. I, that's one of my models is that the body knows. And if you take a step back and just listen to your body, it will give you messages. It will send you signals about how it's feeling or what you need to look out for, what you're craving. Um, and then you can start investigating into those things. It will tell you more. A balanced amount of sunshine will help your body absorb nutrients. And this is very important because I know, you know, there's been definitely um, an overwhelming amount of uh, fear and concern, re you know, regarding uh, cancer and the body and the sun. And so, and interestingly enough, you know, EWE just put out the information on sunscreens, which is really important. And I encourage all of you to, um, to look at and understand which products are going to be helpful. But interestingly enough, a lot of these um, uh, sunscreens actually had cancer-causing agents when we were actually trying to avoid cancer from the sun. Uh, but what's important to know about the sun is just getting a little bit of sun, not, not a lot. You know, of course, I definitely don't advocate getting <laughs> to the point where you're 
getting near a burn or anything like that, but even getting 10 to 15 minutes of sun, and it, it will depend on your skin pigmentation, okay, and the, um, so the, the, the race and so forth, it will depend on the amount of sun that you get. But 10 to 15 minutes on average is going to be enough um, where you get it on your body and your body will be able to absorb more nutrients. Your thyroid gland gets stimulated. Um, it's very, very helpful, so that's important. Um, okay, so there's many green benefits of breastfeeding, and of course, I gave you a lot of options, uh, or I had mentioned that, you know, with um, bottles, you want to look for, uh, avoid three sixes and sevens, there's a lot of resources, I believe. Uh, the soft landing is one of them, the way they provide tons and tons of great products for that. But what's great with um, breastfeeding is that it's totally green. It's, it's just a, a very natural green part of our lives, uh, and a very simple way to just, uh, you know, give our contribution to the environment at the same time bond with the baby. Breastfeeding reduces waste, is plastic free, your baby will be leaner and less prone to child obesity, eliminates transportation to purchase formula and reduces gasoline to ship bottles and formula, and is biodegradable. And interestingly enough, everybody's uh, body, right, the, the milk that a mother develops uh, in, her, in her breast milk is, is made specifically for her baby. So like the nutrients, like, like literally all the... the the, the different levels of nutrients and things that go through the mother's breast milk are literally designed and customized for the baby. It's just, it's just phenomenal. That information always, um, it's just, I don't know, every time I learn more about the body, it's just amazing how powerful and how intelligent it really is. Okay, so your home environment. Um, this is huge. You, you want to prepare your home environment. You want to inspect for home air quality, water, mold, cleaning products, and pesticides. Again, it can seem very overwhelming at first, but the point is, is you know what, there are simple and easy steps to do this. Um, the first is, especially when you're preparing a nursery and so forth, um, using no or low VOC paint. One of the top um, makers of this on the line right now is Benjamin Moore Aurora. There's also Olympic Premium, but from uh, my experience and also from uh, other feedback, Benjamin Moore Aurora in terms of quality is, is a really, really great. Um, again, in your home, you want to look at your filtration system, your water system, and you want to avoid any uh, plastic as much as possible. And then ventilation is so important. Statistically, I mean, so we, some people say about half, but I've even seen some statistics that say anywhere from 80 to 95 percent of Americans spend their time indoors. And then the time that you spend indoors, you literally have a lot of levels of um, airborne toxic chemicals. They even say two to five times as much more than the outdoors floating around you. So improving the air quality is extremely important. Opening windows, um, you know, especially for those of you that are, you know, it's in the summertime or more tropical, warmer climates are able to do this. And then plants. Plants are such an amazing asset um, in helping you filter the air. Uh, there's also HEPA, HEPA filters that are out there. There's just lots of resources and things you can do. And something that also helps improve the air quality is removing your shoes at the front door. So, um, you know, again, what you're doing by that is you're uh, avoiding any of the outside anything that you basically take it from the outside, you're avoiding any of that coming inside of your home, so that's very helpful. Avoiding purchasing new electronics, which emit uh, PBDEs. Now, with this, or even new furniture, and most of the time, uh, I think it's since 2005, most manufacturers have actually um, done away with these off-gases and so forth, but you also want to double check, and just to be on the safe side, I, I personally would avoid it um, and look into more organic materials and so forth. There's a few amazing resources out there. If you haven't been to the website, healthychild.com, I highly recommend it. Uh, they're very reputable, credible. They have a, um, an entire product list guide as well as a parenting guide that you can all uh, utilize and use. Uh, one of the companies that is uh, really wonderful is uh, Naturepedic. So if you haven't been to their website, I highly recommend it. It's naturepedic.com where you can find a lot of um, or nat uh, organic natural bedding materials and furniture. Uh, another website is organicmattresses.com. Uh, that is very helpful as well. And then um, I believe you have absolutely organic, absolutelyorganic.com. I'll find it here in a second. But that is another wonderful uh, resource in terms of finding uh, natural bedding materials, furniture, and so forth. Um, and then also what's interesting too is, again, in the similarly how you're looking for seals just to look at certain standards and so forth, um, now there are, for example, GreenGuard. There, um, their third-party testing program for low-emitting product materials. Um, and so if you see, you know, if you're about to buy a crib and so forth, uh, furniture, looking for a green guard seal, or looking for a global organic textile standard seal, um, or even using any of the resources like um, Healthy Child, Healthy World, or HealthyChild.com, you know, again, they will give um, 
their review or their tests or um, uh, information and facts on any of these. So that's also very helpful. Uh, buying toys from wood and other natural materials, that's extremely important. Uh, now it's a lot easier, of course, and through the wonderful um, you know, technology of the internet, it's, it's a lot easier to do. But now a lot of stores and a lot of um, you know, uh, different companies are providing so many options for this. So uh, that's much easier uh, to find nowadays. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but using natu natural household cleaning products this is one of the first things I look at um, because, again, it's, it's airborne chemicals and toxins floating all over the air. Knowing what you put in, in your lawn, um, pest control, lex you know, all those types of things, you want to be very, very mindful. Uh, that's, you know, that goes into the air and around, and especially if you have open windows, it just can seep into the home very quickly, and a lot of it is very carcinogenic and toxic, so you want to be very, very aware about that. Um, mold also can be a, a tremendous issue as well, so um, there's a lot of information out there about that, but, you know, uh, some